Hello everyone, this is Lindsay Clark and I will be your primary instructor for current topics in medical laboratory sciences. This first lecture is going to be an introduction sort of to the overall MLS program as well as to this course. Um, we will cover program and course expectations for you all as students. Um, so it'll be super fun policies and regulations. So I will give you a little background on me. Um, your first assignment is going to be something similar, a sort of background on yourself. So a little background on me. I grew up in Fort Smith, Arkansas. I have lived in Arkansas my whole life. Uh, my first degree is in history and gender studies, which I got from a small liberal arts college here in Arkansas. And I also have a degree in medical laboratory sciences from UAMS. That's right, I went through this very same program. Um, I then finished my Master of Public Health this past May here at UAMS as well. And my major area of study during my master's program was environmental and occupational health. Um, I did a lot of work involving biosafety, laboratory safety and plan to continue some of that work in the future. Um, in my free time, I enjoy hiking and kayaking and I love riding bikes. I don't have any kids, but I do have one large goober dog named Opal, three cats, Cricket, Cleopatra, and little Millie Graham, who just goes by Millie. Um, and there are several unnamed bunnies that live in my yard and eat my plants. Um, so I just consider them pets also. Anyway, enough about me. So we will get started on our course here. Um, I'm looking forward to having all of you in class. So we will start every lecture with objectives and these are points that we want to make sure we are getting across to you in our lectures. Um, so the objectives for this lecture are that you will be able to locate and explain general rules and policies for the College of Health Professions, so for the college overall. You will be able to locate and explain general rules and policies for the Medical Laboratory Sciences program, so on the program level. Um, this will include the program progression policy, our program attendance policy, and for those on-campus students and any distant students visiting campus, um, our parking policy. You will also be able to identify campus resources available to students, which includes Campus Life and Student Support Services, IT Help for Students, the UAMS Library, the Student Success Center, which is part of the library, as well as the Student Wellness Program. And lastly, you will be able to expect, uh, I'm sorry, state our expectations for this course as well as the MLS program. So we'll start here with the UAMS College of Health Professions policies. These are the college level policies that all programs within this college must follow. These are found in the UAMS Academic Catalog, which can be found on the CHP website and can be downloaded for free as a PDF file. The link is available here, um, just under catalogs and handbooks are on the CHP website. If you click that link, it should take you um, to the downloadable PDF version. Also on the CHP website is other good information um, that you will want to know where to locate, such as academic calendars, tells you when all the holidays are, when we don't have class, when the end of the semester, all that good stuff. It has information about campus life and student support services. There are forms and policies, um, a link to Gus, and there's information there about getting help with IT issues. So if you need help with IT, um, you can start there and they have contact information. And again, there's a link posted there for you to use. 
Now we'll move to the Medical Laboratory Sciences program specific policies. These policies are located in the MLS Student Policies Handbook, which should have been provided to you during orientation. You, the student, are responsible for familiarizing yourself with all these policies and for adhering to them. And that includes not just our program specific policies, but also the UAMS campus policies, the college policies, the Department of Lab Sciences policies, the MLS program policies, as well as the policies at any clinical site to which you are assigned. Failure to comply with these policies will result in disciplinary action, which none of us want to do, so please don't put us in that situation. So again, you guys are responsible for all policies, but I'm going to highlight some of the things in the MLS Student Policies Handbook that are super important. So if you have your handbook, please um, have that with you, highlight these sections, take notes, scribble in the margins, whatever you need to do to remember these things. So we'll start page five with important phone numbers. Um, here you will find a list of phone numbers for everyone in the Department of Lab Sciences, as well as important CHP phone numbers, such as the Financial Aid Office, where they deal with your money, the Registrar's Office, where they help you to enroll in courses, um, the Dean's Office, Campus Police, etc. Um, I can promise that you will need at least one of these phone numbers at some point during the program, so just make a note that you can find those phone numbers there. On page 8, under the College Non-Cognitive Performance Standards, there is a line that states students are accountable for conducting themselves as responsible adults. Um, we expect you to act like adults. You need to attend all classes, labs, clinical experiences. You should be on time, be prepared, and act professionally. On page 10, the program progression policy. You need to be familiar with this policy. Um, our program is a lockstep program, meaning you must complete all required coursework in sequence to progress. So if something happens, you don't complete a course, you will not be able to repeat that course next semester. You will have to wait until it is offered again the next year. On page 11, the student remediation policy. You may request an appointment with faculty at any time to address any concerns you have. So please meet with your faculty if you feel like you are struggling, if you are having trouble with anything, if your blackboard is not working, um, please contact us. We want you guys to succeed. There are lots of resources on campus available also, um, and we can help you find what's going to work for you. So please contact us if you need us. On page 12 is the grading scale, and I want you guys to note that the grading scale for all didactic courses, um, meaning the lecture portion of the courses, is different than the grading scale for the lab courses and clinical internships. So if you want to know what constitutes an A in your lab course and what constitutes an A in your lecture course, that is where you can find that grading scale. So more highlights on page 15, it discusses uh, testing and exams. You must have a webcam and respond as lockdown browser to take exams um, and we want you to familiarize yourself with this before the exam starts. If you go ahead and download this software, get it on your computer, there is a little practice quiz that you can take to make sure that everything is working correctly for your exams. So please go ahead and do that during your first week and if you have any issues please contact us or contact IP, IT to get those worked out. Now on page 16 we have student honors and scholarships. So this page lists honors available for outstanding students in our program and 
MLS scholarships available to you guys as students. More information about scholarships is available on the CHP website, but we also will send that information out to you via email um, when the application cycle opens. Our program happens to have the most program specific scholarships and we definitely want you guys to take advantage of those opportunities. On page 22 we have the honor code. Take note of the line that states students must not give or receive aid on quizzes or examinations. Now I want to caution you guys to be careful on social media. If you take your exam at 7 a.m and post exam content in your Facebook study group for those taking their exams later, you are in violation of this policy. Social media is never really private and once it's posted, it never really goes away. Please be mindful of this policy. Okay, so a couple more um, policy highlights and we'll talk about some that pertain to on-campus students and some that pertain more to the distant um, online students. So for our on-campus students, page 16 talks about parking. Um, there is free parking available at War Memorial um, and Ray Winder Field. And you can find all kinds of good information on the UAMS parking website. Um, it will tell you where you can park, what hours you can park there, um, talks about the shuttles, shuttle schedules, maps, etc. There is also an app you can download on your phone. It is called Ride Systems. You can download this app and it has a shuttle tracker so that you will be able to follow the shuttle and know when you need to be at your shuttle stop. Um, for those parking on campus, after 7.30, you must call to get the shuttle to pick you up. So if anybody is in the library late and they need to go to their car at War Memorial, after 7.30, you have to call. And if you'll get your phone out and put this phone number in your phone, it is 501-779-3616. When you call this number, somebody will answer and he will say, this is Eric. Um, don't be alarmed, that's just how he answers the phone. Uh, just tell him that you need a ride from wherever you are. Say you're outside the library. Say, can I get a ride from the library to War Memorial, please? And he will say, sure thing, and he will come and pick you up. Generally, we'll drop you off at your car, even. Um, Eric is super nice. Okay, on page 21, attendance for you online uh, students will talk about this in a moment. On campus attendance, attendance in lecture is required. Attendance in lab is required. Attendance is required, period. Come to class. They make me get out of bed at the crack of 8 a.m. to be here to be prepared. You guys need to do the same. And this will also help prepare you for your professional life. Um, as many day shifts will start at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m., which is crazy early. So just get used to getting up, getting to class, getting somewhere on time. Okay, for the online students, I want you guys to pay attention to page 21, Course Information for Distant Students. Um, you guys are responsible for keeping up with your coursework and taking exams when they're scheduled. Don't fall behind and make sure you know when your exams are scheduled. Check your UAMS email every day. Each individual course syllabus will have details on exam dates, exam procedures, assignment due dates, etc. for you guys. Make sure you review all of those. You guys are expected to follow the same schedule as on-campus students unless otherwise noted. So please try to keep up with your schoolwork and don't fall too far behind. Communicate with your instructors. I just have this in here to remind you that we are here. 
you can call us, email, stop by, talk to us, um, set up an appointment to do Skype or Blackboard Collaborate, however you want to connect with us. Um, we will do our best to help you and work with you. And we want you guys to succeed. So please come and talk to us if you need us. Also, short quiz, where in the policy handbook can you find our phone numbers? That's right, on page five of the MLS student policy handbook. So now we are gonna discuss some of the um, campus resources that are available to all UAMS students. Almost all of these resources are available whether you are on campus or distant student. Um, so online students, keep listening because some of this can be helpful. Okay, resources available for students. And I have a note, this is not an exhaustive list. There are lots of other resources, but these are some of the big ones. So first we have Campus Life and Student Support Services. Um, they deal with campus housing, intercollegiate activities, student government. They're the ones that send the emails out for student insurance verification. This will be mostly on campus students. The next point here is IT help. Um, you guys have a lot of technology in the classrooms these days, so IT help is very important. For on campus, um, and this means you are physically on campus, you can contact IT through the intranet, which is the homepage that comes up when you open your browser on campus. Um, if you are off campus, meaning all of our online students or any of our on campus students that are not physically on campus, you may call IT Help Desk at 501 686 8555. That's an important phone number to keep handy, and they are available around the clock. So if you need them, please call them. Next, we have the UAMS Library. Um, they have so many resources, and if you just Google UAMS Library, their webpage will come up, um, and you can go and kind of play around and see what kind of stuff they have there. And if you are off campus, you still have access to all of these things. It will pop up and ask you to sign in. You can just use your UAMS ID and password, and it should log you in where you have access to all the articles on PubMed, for example. So you guys use that resource. It's a great place to start if you're doing any type of research. The Student Success Center. Um, Student Success Center is associated with the library, and they can help students with academic coaching, they can set you up with peer tutoring. They have student tech support. Um, they also have the writing center. And so they can help everyone with that. On-campus students also have access to the presentation center, which is essentially a place to go uh, where you can practice presentations or record presentations. Um, that's a, a good resource to have. If you're nervous about giving presentations, you can go and practice there. The Student Success Center, um, you can access their website through the UAMS Library website. You can contact one of us to get you in touch with them, um, or you can email Mary Beth Norcross, um, and she should be in your address book in your email. And the last resource here is the Student Wellness Program. This is a free, confidential, timely program that offers counseling, therapy, psychiatric evaluations, and or medication management to students. This is available to on-campus and online students. You can find their website, UAMS Student Wellness Program, 
find their website and it has instructions for how if you are interested in this program for how to get started with that. I can tell you that um, Dr. Thapa is the psychiatrist there and he's a wonderful, wonderful man. If you feel like you are overly anxious, stressed out, overwhelmed, and you think that it would help to talk to someone, they have counselors um, and they also have Dr. Thapa that can, can talk to you. Um, it's free, it's covered in your student fees. And if you need to take advantage of that, it's confidential. They don't put any information anywhere that would identify you as having used that service. So if you need it, take advantage of it. Okay, so now we're going to move on to this course. Um, now that we've gone through all the super fun policies. Um, so I want you guys to succeed in this course. It's not, my goal here is not to test you. I don't want you to have to study 80 hours a week. Um, I want this course to be fun. I want it to be something that covers sort of everything that needs to be covered but isn't really touched on in other courses. Um, so I want you to review the syllabus because you always need to review the syllabus. It's got good information in it. Um, in order to succeed in this course, you need to watch the lectures, stay on top of any assigned readings, don't get behind on your work, um, pay attention to assignment due dates and when the final exam is scheduled, and that should be on your calendars, um, as well as in the syllabus. There is no textbook for this course. Um, so there is a lecture manual. I am in the process of updating the ancient information that was in this lecture manual. So for you guys, I will be posting as we go through the course, I will be posting more and more of the lecture manual as well as the lectures. So be patient with me. I will not have everything up right at the beginning of the semester. I am working diligently to get it as quickly as possible. You may print the lecture manual or if you want to download it to your device or however you want to do is fine with me, whatever works best for you. If uh, there are any supplemental readings provided, um, I will post those either as a web link or a PDF file. So you should be able to just pull those up, print them out, save them to your device, however you would like to do that. So this course is going to be organized in modules and each module will have several lecture topics within it. Um, I have posted a schedule in Blackboard, should be on the first page there. Um, now I just want you guys to know, again, this course is being updated and because life happens, uh, this schedule is subject to change. I don't want to change it, but things happen. So um, this again, pay attention to your UAMS email account. That's how most of us will communicate with you guys. On campus students, I do expect you to be in class for scheduled lectures. Um, online students, uh, you are expected to follow the same schedule. So if there's a lecture topic scheduled for that day, you really are expected to have that lecture um, done on that day or at least during that same week. So if you guys have any questions, any comments or any concerns, this is my contact information. My email address is lkclark at uams.edu. And my office phone number is 501-296-1017. Please email me, call me, do not hesitate to get in touch with me and um, whatever we need to do to make sure that you guys are successful, we will do our best to make that happen. So I hope this course is enjoyable for all of you and I am looking forward to getting into some more exciting topics.